dirty a surface you get, the more flooding and sewage overflows you get, like nobody likes seeing coming down the river from Valdosta. So that's one of many reasons. Now, indeed, there are places where septic tanks are a huge problem. However, according to the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, right here in this room, in multiple presentations, for their basin management action plans for the Swanee River Basin, that is not the main problem in the Swanee River Basin for nitrates leaching into <coughs> springs and rivers. In the Swanee upper middle Swanee, it's even worse than we were hearing about in the Santa Fe. In the upper middle Swanee, if I'm remembering the numbers right, it needs to decrease by 83 to 92 percent. This is agriculture. Now, it's not to say that there aren't necessarily certain problems along the river, which is the topic I want to talk about later. It's just going to be more frequent, regular water quality testing to find out where stuff is coming from. Okay, but as far as the nitrates leaching in the Swanee River Basin, um, <coughs> and I, I would say it is possible to grow things with less fertilizer. I say this because I do. Now, yes, I live in Georgia. In Miles County, the next county across on family land. But we grow corn, we use a third as much fertilizer as our neighbors do. How can we do this? Because we don't use seed that's been bred to resist groundwater. We use heirloom seed that's drought resistant, and it's possible to do it. Do we get as many bushels, bushels per acre? No. But we get significantly more proteins in corn, and corn sells for more. And to scale up to the size of agriculture that people are using in the rest of the Swanee River Basin? I don't know. We need some big farmers to find that. I don't know if we find anybody with these pockets. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. The price of corn today, it don't matter what you grow it, you can't make it. <laughs> I love the crop right now, hardly you can.